welcome back to Caffeine and Crime. Today we have a new first part of Serial Killer Season. Today for Season 2, Episode 5, I have Part 1 of Nanny Doss, also known as the Giggling Granny, if that's not frightening enough. But this is quite an eventful story, so I hope you guys stay tuned and watch. This is part one. Part two will be coming next week for you here on Tuesdays. Just a little reminder before we jump in that you can catch season two, Serial Killer Season, here every Tuesday. It is a little flashback moment. This is a pre-recorded season that's now finally on YouTube. But I do have some other seasons that are uploading as well. Season 4 Spooky Season from last October is being uploaded every Friday, so if you missed the last one, I will have it linked right up above for you to go check out. It has been a lot of work, but yes, there is two videos a week here on the Caffeine and Crime YouTube for Spooky Season and to play a little bit of catch up. I want to eventually have all of the seasons here on YouTube. So if you enjoy true crime, you can catch true crime here every Tuesday with the serial killer season. But if you love spooky, haunted places, a little bit of true crime, but more so history, you can catch those videos every Friday. With that being said, the current spooky season for this year, season six, is on podcast platforms. Apple, Google, Spotify, Anchor so many more. You can catch it there and it'll eventually be here as well if you want to hold out and wait, but if you don't want to and you want to give it a listen, you can go find it on your podcast platform. Those episodes go up every Tuesday as well, but I hope you guys enjoy part one of Nanny Doss and stay tuned for next week for the second part. So today we're going to be talking about Nanny Doss, um, also known as the Giggling Granny, which is creepy AF. Nanny was an American serial killer responsible for the deaths of 11 people between sometime in the 1920s and 1954, so like in between those two times. She was referred to as a lot of things. Like I said, the Giggling Granny, the Lonely Hearts Killer, the Black Widow, the Lady Bluebeard, and she was called a self-made widow by a newspaper. So yeah, <laughs> kind of... If you haven't heard this story, then you kind of get the gist of what's going on here. So, um, Nanny is obviously not her real name. Um, she, her real name is Nancy. Nancy Hazel. She was born on November 4th, 1905 in Blue Mountain, Alabama. Her and her siblings helped with the family farm from a young age so much that they were kept home to do their farm duties instead of going to school, which I feel like was more of a common thing, especially like in the South, um, back in this time as well too, but none of them really knew how to read or write that well. And around 1912, she was seven years old and they were on a train going to see some family. Um, Nanny, now in the future, or not future, um, still the past, <laughs> but she said after everything came out that this was one of the reasons why she had um, the issues that she did have. And sometimes with serial killers, they do claim that after a tragedy struck them or something um, tragic happened to them, that's kind of what turned them into like the person that they become. I don't really know, but that is just the, the gist of this pretty much. Um, but like I said, she was on a train going to see some family and something happened. The train slammed on the brakes and came to a stop, flinging little Nanny at the time headfirst into a metal bar in front of her. From then on, she suffered from blackouts and headaches and for years resulting in depression. So Nanny couldn't read or write well from missing so much of school, but she still tried to figure out as much as she could and got better and better while reading romance magazines that her mother had. And one of the columns in this magazine was called the Lonely Hearts column. And it's kind of like, it's a romance relationship column where people would send in their love stories and their love struggles. But there's also a place for ads, for dates. It's like the old school Tinder, honestly. But Nanny and her sisters had very strict roles and one of them being absolutely no boys. 
Their father also wouldn't let them do normal girl things like dress up, fix their hair up, wear makeup, or attend dances. They had their chores, and they had to grow up fast. During her childhood, she did, however, go through multiple times of being molested and sexually assaulted by several different men. Which, I mean, that right there can mess someone up, but whew, this story gets real, real fast. When she was 16, she got a job at the Linen Thread Company, and around this time, she met Charlie Bra Bragsher, I think is his name, a co-worker at the Linen Factory, and they started dating and got married within four months at the age of 16. <laughs> Nanny said, and this is her words later on, she said, I married as my father wished in 1921 to a boy I only knew about four or five months who had no family, only a mother who was unwed and who had taken over my life completely when we were married. She never seen anything wrong with what she done, but she would take spells. She would not let my own mother stay all night. Very odd, but um, I, I just find it odd that her dad let her get married at 16, but before that it was no makeup, no, you know, no boys completely. But when you're 16, you are old enough, you're ready to get out of that house. <laughs> so things still weren't great for Nanny, who went from being controlled by her father to being controlled by her husband and his mother that lived with them. His mom was very overbearing, but they went on with their life. They tried to just move on. I mean, besides the fact that he was a very controlling husband as well. But um, like I said, they went on with their life and they started a family. And girl after girl, here came the baby girls. And they ended up having four daughters between 1923 to 1927 which ended up being a lot on Annie, as you can imagine. Um, the marriage wasn't perfect either. They were both known to cheat on each other, um, but Charlie would like disappear for days and weeks and go off with women. And it's just so crazy because like Nanny knew, like she was at home and she knew, oh, you know, Charlie's gone for a week with a mistress and like then he would come back home and be present for a while overbearing controlling and then he would disappear like I don't know why these women did it I, I don't I don't understand it I would never be able to <laughs> but apparently uh she went out too and did some cheating I guess she just wouldn't disappear for weeks because she had the, the girls to look after but apparently Charlie's mother did a lot of the raising with the girls too and Charlie started disappearing so often that Nanny turned to um, heavily drinking and smoking. Charlie would be gone and Nanny would still be at home wrangling the four kids and her mother-in-law. His mother was still there while he was like off doing this. Like she had to have known what he was doing too. But um, in 1927, while Charlie was gone for some time with a woman, two of their daughters tragically died of what was thought to be food poisoning. Crazy. These two were the middle girls. Um, like I said, they had four, four girls. So the two middle ones passed. So there was an older one. Um, I don't even know like how old she was at this time. Um, but I guess she was a pretty good age of like being able to take care of herself. And the two middle ones, I guess were still like younger kids, maybe even a toddler because the youngest was an infant. So you have the infant and now the oldest that are still alive. And the other two died of what they thought was food poisoning. But Charlie was very suspicious of the situation. He didn't think it was just food poisoning. He thought Nanny had something to do with it. So he ended up leaving her and he took their oldest daughter with him, leaving behind his youngest, which was an infant, and his own mother. That, that's just crazy to me. So you're suspicious that your wife killed two of your kids. You have two left, but you're just going to take one of them with you. And you're not even going to like do anything about it. You're not going to like have her questioned. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was just the times. I, I don't know. <sighs> so with Charlie and the oldest daughter gone, strangely, Charlie's mother died too, and what was known as suspicious circumstances that was never looked into any further. Nanny soon after started working at a cotton mill to support herself and her only daughter, Florine, that was left with her. Next summer, and at 1928, Charlie decided to come back home. I guess he was like, 
well, she may have killed them, but oh well, you know, and just came back home. He comes back with their other daughter, Melvina, only for things to not work out again. Charlie took off and once again claimed he left her because he was frightened of her. This time, he didn't take either daughter with him. Nanny is forced to move herself and her two daughters back to her childhood home where her mother is still living. At this point, I guess her father has passed or he's no longer in the picture, so it's just her living there with her two girls and her mother. And it is here where she finds the magazine and sees that the Lonely Hearts column is still going. So she once again starts reading and getting invested in all these stories, but this time around, she starts writing to the men in the ad section in this column. And one of the men, Robert Frank Harrelson, he went by Frank, um, responded and they met and married in 1929. Like she, oh my gosh, I don't, I would never be able to marry that fast either. It's just crazy to me, but she moved on very fast. They lived in Jacksonville with her two daughters. So she still has the two daughters. Now she's remarried to this Frank and her last husband's out of the picture. Apparently, I guess he came around once in a while maybe for the daughters, but it wasn't very often as what I've gathered from this situation. After being married for a little while, she discovers he not only is an alcoholic, but also has a long criminal record for assault. <laughs> she picks winners. They were still married for 16 years, so much longer than her first marriage. They really tried to push through and make it work. Um, and in 1943... Her daughters are much older now, and her oldest daughter, Melvina, gave birth to her first child, a son named Robert Lee Haynes. She had another baby just two years later in 1945. During giving birth um, with her second baby, I guess she was having a really hard time, so she was given ether um, that made her very loopy and sleepy. That's what they did at the time, and... Um, she recalled having some hallucinations and one that she found was really strange was she thought she saw her mother nanny sticking a hat pin into her baby's head. Once Melvina woke up and was no longer groggy, she called for her husband and sister and when she asked her husband and sister for clarification, like, you know, I was hallucinating things, where's my baby? They said that nanny had told them that the baby was dead and they noticed that she was holding a pin. The doctors, however, couldn't give a positive explanation. Nanny looked very suspicious, obviously, because she was the last one watching the baby by herself when the baby died. So awful. It was so awful and so tragic that Melvina and her husband, they took the death very, very hard. And just the sadness of it and just the whole situation is just one of those where their relationship did not make it and they did separate. Melvina was living still with her mother um, and her son that she still had, uh, Robert. Just like her mother, soon after the separation, she was on to dating another man and he was a soldier. Nanny did not approve of this guy. She was not happy about it and they, they fought about it all the time. And one time it got so heated that it caused Melvina to take off and to stay with her dad, who, you know, isn't in the picture that often. So, the, I mean, we're talking back to Charlie. She's staying with Charlie. She leaves her kid with Nanny. Like, um, your ex-husband or whoever that you had these kids with told you that she had a pen when she told him that your baby had died. There was, like, some suspicion towards nanny. I don't know how you live with this person and with your babies, let alone leaving your young child with her while you go off because you're mad at her. Uh, it's just, oh my gosh, it literally just kills me. So because of this, um, during this time, while this whole fight broke out, so Melvina takes off, she's with her dad, Charlie, visiting him, staying with him. I don't even know like how long this period was. But during this time, um, Robert, the little boy, is with Nanny. And yes, what you're thinking is already true. Robert died unexpectedly from unknown asphyxiation in Nanny's care on July 7th, 1945. Mind-blowing. 
Two months later, weirdly, Nanny was collecting $500 from an insurance policy that she had just taken out on the child. That same year was the end of World War II, and it caused a celebration. Frank, Nanny's current husband, was out drinking all night. Um, You know, he's an alcoholic. And when he got home, he took advantage of Nanny and raped her. The next day, she discovered his corn whiskey jar buried in the ground, so like his secret stash of whiskey, as she was tending her rose garden. The rape had been the very last straw for her, so she took the jar and she topped it off with some rat poisoning. And as luck would have it, Frank did not make it. He died of a very painful death that evening. And honestly, I can say I'll let that one pass. (laughs) I mean, after that, um, I feel like this is just one of the many that I'm just like, okay, nanny, (laughs) you know, this is one that I can kind of understand a little bit on. Um, But (sighs) what does she do? She goes back to the Lonely Hearts column where she meets Arlie Lanning while traveling to North Carolina. He was a lot like Frank too, an abusive alcoholic. And what do you know? They get married. Nanny at this point gives no fucks and starts running off with random men, kind of like her first husband used to do to her, Charlie. So she's with Arlie, they're married, and yet she's taking off for like weeks at a time. Mind you, she doesn't have her kids, she doesn't have grandkids that she's helping with or anything like that. So she's just with Arlie, she's running off, and I mean, she's just she's just out there getting it at this point. Arlie passes away. <laughs> literally, from what looks like heart failure. But honestly, what can you believe anymore? Funny enough, I guess not really funny, but um, a life insurance policy was taken out. And right after his death, which was so strange, was the house that they shared together burnt down. And the thing is, everyone around them was just like, oh my gosh, this poor woman. She was on her third husband. This is her second husband in a row that has died. You know, this poor widow. And now her house burns down. But she was just collecting another insurance policy this time on the house. Then she moves in with Arlie's mother, and I want—I hope I'm saying his name right. I think it's Arlie's, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But as luck would go for Nanny, or should I say the luck Nanny would get from her actions, his mother dies almost immediately after she moves in. Like, she literally just died in her sleep. And I guess at the age she was at, they, like, didn't really question it. I don't know. Um, But this caused Nanny to leave North Carolina, and she ended up at her sister's house, Dovey, Dovey, I I don't know, I might be mispronouncing that one too, Um, but Dovey was bedridden, she was already pretty sick, and strangely enough, soon after Nanny's arrival, she dies. Literally, everybody drops like flies, like this is a person you would want to steer clear of regardless if you were suspicious, like if she was the one doing this or not, like just steer clear of Nanny. But now Nanny is joining the Diamond Circle Club, which was a dating service looking for a new man. So I guess at this point she is over the whole Lonely Hearts column and ready to move on to bigger things. And you might be thinking at this point, how many does that make anymore? Like how many people have just passed away unexpectedly or for unknown causes around Nanny. And don't worry, I am going to total it up for you guys, tally up all of these. (laughs) Uh, It is a mess. I am going to go ahead and wrap up part one here. I'm hoping that I can get this over uh, the 20 minute mark, but... Like I said, some of these are going to be a little bit shorter, but I really wanted my serial killers to be at least two parts so that um, we can discuss them a little bit longer. And I don't know, I'm having a lot of fun with the serial killer season. So let me know what you guys think over my um, Instagram at caffeine crime podcast. And yeah, would like to go give me a follow and keep up with when episodes go live. But if not, another episode finishing up the story will be coming next Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. Um, I honestly think it's going to be a pretty short one. So I may have to do some time filling on this because I kind of just zoomed through this tonight. But 
let me know what you guys think. You guys may already know this story, but I hope you guys tune in next week for the rest of it, and then we can kind of discuss it a little bit more. It's crazy. Ugh, I just can't believe, like, how many people just drop around her. Like, it's just insane. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this part here. I hope you guys enjoyed this part at least, and I will see you guys next week. With